Uh, are you people visualizing my slides or not? Yes, it is visible. No, my picture is visible or slides are visible? The first no, slide, slide is of Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Sorry? Your slides are visible, you can continue. Yes. Okay. Uh, just a moment. The Bismillah Rahman Rahim in the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. My voice is clear or not? Yes, it is okay, clear. Huh? Yes, okay, I should, I should continue? Yes, yes, sure. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. The greetings and uh, very good morning. Uh, first of all, I would like to say thank you to Dr. Rehan for providing this forum during this COVID quarantine time. And definitely, it's a work of, uh, of uh, great hardware, uh, hard work that uh, he has uh, done this work and has provided all you for this forum uh, in this difficult time. But when there's a will, there's a way. And uh, I, I would also like to thank, say thank you to all the team of Association of International Dentistry on my behalf. Uh, for providing me uh, also the chance to uh, have a talk over there. Inshallah, we will, uh, this is a, a, just a start and inshallah in future we will continue this series also so that maximum people can get benefit from these uh, uh, lectures. Uh, our today's topic is Zagumetico Maxillary Complex. Just a moment, just a moment. Uh, Zagumatico maxillary complex fractures, and I am Dr. Asim Nazib. I'm an associate professor and head of department in the oral and maxillofacial surgery unit at the Institute of Dentistry, Multan. Uh, this is the institution where I work, a great institution in the south, uh, uh, southern area of the Punjab province of Pakistan. We'll discuss Zagumatico maxillary complex fractures uh, with, uh, under the headings of introduction of zygomatico maxillary complex fractures, surgical anatomy of uh, zygomatico maxillary complex and associated mid-facial area. And we will also discuss how we can classify these fractures on, different, on the basis of different classification systems. And then how can, we can diagnose these fractures based on clinical history of the patient, clinical evaluation of the patient, different clinical features, uh, presented in the patients with zygomatico maxillary complex fractures, as well as based on different imaging examination, we can diagnose these fractures properly. And then what different types of surgical approaches we can get for open access to these fractures, or what other approaches, conservative approaches can be, uh, can be selected for management of these fractures, and what different treatment options are there for managing these fractures. What are different methods of reduction of these fractures as well as uh, for the fixation of these fractures and whenever you work definitely there could be complications also and we will also discuss what different types of complications we may encounter while treating these fractures uh, and we, uh, slightly we will also touch the latest advances in, in, in the field of maxillofacial surgery especially for, uh, for, for treating zygomatico maxillary complex fractures and finally we will conclude the session with questions and answers by the participants and answers definitely by me and, and if anyone else can uh, want to share his, his experiences or her experience and he or she is most well. First of all, the surgical anatomy, uh, the mid facial area uh, is, is bounded severely by a line, a imaginary line drawn from uh, the frontosegomatic suture from uh, uh, of, of uh, uh, one side to the other, uh, uh, the frontosegomatic suture on one side to the other, uh, and in between the front, uh, frontonasal suture, if we draw an imaginary line spearly by joining both right and left frontosegomatic suture through frontonasal suture, and uh, 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 to the opposite side, and inferiorly along the upper occlusal plane, or in case of three dangerous patients, the alveolar ridge, the area bounded in between these two lines is the mid facial area. And this is uh, an area which is, uh, which is just uh, like, a, uh, uh, like a pyramid with its base and rear 
specifically uh, towards the facial region and its apex towards the uh, towards the pterygoid lamina. And posteriorly, this area extends towards the body of saphenoid bone and, uh, and at the pterygoid place level. Uh, there are total 17 bones which, which constitute in the in, in the construction of mid face. Uh, there are seven paired bones, total 13 bones, and three unpaired bones. The paired bones uh, include right and left maxillae, the two zygomatic bones, right and left palatine bones, the two lacrimal bones, two nasal bones, and fear nasal conca is a separate bone, at, uh, right and left, and, and uh, the zygomatic process of temporal bone. And unpaired bones which constitute the mid phase include vomer, saphenoid bone with, with its, its, its uh, a different uh, uh, lesser and greater veins as well as pterygoid plates, and the ethmoid bone with its attached sphere and, uh, and, in a, and, and middle concha. And here concha is a separate bone we have discussed. This is a little bit about the surgical anatomy of zygomatic bone. If I can show you. This uh, this zygomatic bone, this, uh, this the cursor over the blue area. This this zygomatic bone, it's a tetrapod bone with its four processes, which articulate with the adjacent bones like frontal process. It, it articulates with the frontal bone. The temporal process articulates with the with the zygomatic process of temporal bone, and this this constitutes the zygomatic arch. This is also an important part of the zygomatic memory complex. And uh, this is the main body of zygomatic bone, and this body of zygomatic bone it, it gives uh, an, an aesthetic unit of the face in the form of malar eminence. And um, uh, this zygomatic bone it, it uh, also articulates with the frontal posterior maxilla and main body of maxilla at the frontal zygomatic uh, maxillary suture. And internally towards the inner aspect of the orbit, there is zygomatic saphenoid suture. This, uh, this is a tetrapod bone with its four processes like a four legged chair with, with its convex outer surface like in this picture convex outer surface and concave in uh, inner surface and this bone is pierced by uh, by zygomatico facial and zygomatico temporal foramina and infobital foramen which is which is present in the maxilla but the infobital nerve runs uh, within the orbit along in close proximity to the zygomatic bone and when the uh, if, if this zygomatic bone or associated bones they get fractured they could also be damaged to the infobital nerve as well as zygomatic temporal and zygomatic facial muscle and um, and this this bone forms uh, four sutures with the associated bone but this uh, suture uh, is suture with the with the maxillary bone we we'll consider this articulation at two points one at infobital margin the second at zygomatic um, uh, uh, maxillary uh, uh, area that is the zygomatic buttress area that's why it's also uh, said that it's a it's a bone with with the main body and four processes but five articulations and uh, coming towards the etiology of zygomatic maxillary fracture, the main etiology is a road traffic accidents, but there could also be interpersonal violences, there could be industrial trauma, there could be, uh, there co uh, uh, could be sports injuries, fall, or uh, um, uh, uh, there could be blast injuries, there could be gunshot injuries, uh, extra, this, this is uh, uh, what uh, uh, contributes towards the etiology of zygomatic maxillary fractures. Coming towards the classification of zygomatic uh, 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 maxillary complex fractures, there are different classifications. Uh, many people have classified uh, uh, the zygomatic bone fractures into different types, but practically speaking, there are a very, uh, very less number of classifications which, which address the clinical solutions of the, of the zygomatic bone fractures. The first and, uh, uh, classification which we will discuss is the Rowe and Killy classification presented by Rowe and Killy. And according to this, uh, this classification, the zygomatic bone fractures, these are divided into the fractures involving the occlusions and, uh, and fractures not involving the occlusion. Uh, 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 sorry, fractures involving the orbit and fractures not involving the orbit. The fractures which involve the orbit, these are the fractures of body of zygomatic bone. And the fractures which not involve the orbit, these are the fractures of zygomatic arch. And uh, 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 to simplify the classifications, in all types of, uh, types of zygomatic bone uh, fracture, uh, fracture, uh, fracture classification, usually the first type is undisplaced or minimally displaced fractures. And the last type is, is comminuted fractures or grossly displaced fractures. Coming towards uh, the fractures involving the orbit, uh, there are mainly five types of zygomatic bone fractures. Uh, first one is the minimally or undisplaced fracture, then inward downward displacement, then inward 
posterior displacement, then outward displacement, and lastly, commutator fracture. These five types are the, of the uh, fracture, zygomatical uh, com maxillary complex fracture. These, these are the fractures which involve the orbit. Excuse and me, Dr. The, Rasif. Sorry. Excuse me. Sorry. Yes, Actually, yes. There are some persons who are, who, are, who are asking me to slow down your speed because we do not have any issue with time. We have enough time. You can take as long as you can, but kindly stop your slow your speed. <laughs> okay, 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 no issue. Uh, uh, everyone is listening clearly? Yes. Everyone is listening yes, is clearly? Yes, it is clear. You can continue. Okay, okay, okay. I will, I will, I will go slow. Okay, again, I will uh, reclassify the fractures. The first classification, row and kili classification. Uh, according to this classification, the fractures of zygomatic ecomaxillary complex these are divided into two main categories. The first category is the, is the fractures involving the orbit and the second category is the fractures not involving the orbit. The fractures which involve the orbit, these are the fractures of body of zygomatic bone. And the fractures which don't involve the orbit, these are the fractures of zygomatic arch. We'll also, in the later uh, slides, we will also see the, uh, the diagrammatic representation and radiographic representation of those fractures. Then you will definitely uh, have a, a better understanding of those. Just uh, here, I will just enumerate the types of, uh, of, of fractures. The fractures which, uh, which involve the orbit, these are the undisplaced or minimally displaced fractures. The second one is inward downward displacement type. Then the third one is in uh, inward posterior displacement. Then fourth one is outward displacement. That is the whole uh, tetraport complex of body of zygomatic bone. It has come out, has displaced outward. And then comminuted fracture. As I have uh, already mentioned, that in most of the classifications of zygomatic bone fractures or zygomatic complex fractures, the first type is undisplaced or minimally displaced type. And the last one is the, is the comminuted fracture uh, type. Again, I will repeat, undisplaced or minimally displaced fractures, then inward downward displacement, then inward posterior displacement, then outward displacement, then comminuted fractures. Coming towards the fractures not involving the orbit, these are the fractures of zygomatic arch. It has three types, and two types simply undisplace the first type, and the last type is the, is the comminuted type. In between is the V-type in the fracture, a triple fracture of zygomatic arch. Again, undisplaced fractures of zygomatic arch are the, are the zygomatic arch fractures mean fractures which don't involve the orbit because zygomatic arch, it, it doesn't contribute in the, in, the, in the constitution of the orbit. Orbit is the area uh, which harbors the globe, eye globe. And this uh, uh, first type undisplaced fracture are minimally displaced fracture, then V type in fracture, a triple fracture. How we will form when the, the fracture of zygomatic arch will occur at three areas, especially when there is a, a blow from outside towards the medial side and the arch get displaced medially towards the temporal fossa, then the, uh, this arch will go uh, inward in the form of V. When you will see the radiographs in the coming slides, you will have better understanding. And the, the last type is the, is the comminuted fracture. And the second classification, which is also useful in case of management of zygomatic bone fracture, is the Henderson's classification. Again, in, uh, 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 we'll discuss the Henderson classification also in detail. These are different types of class uh, of zygomatic maxillary complex fractures according to Rho and Killy classification. Look here, the, this uh, this uh, uh, type first one minimally uh, minimally displaced and inward downward displacement. This one is the, this C is the outward displacement, and this one is the, uh, and, and, and D, it is the commutator fracture of zygomatic homexy complex. And this E, the, the uh, last picture, this is the V type in fracture of zygomatic uh, root or zygomatic arch. And this, uh, as you see, this uh, arch, it is not, it's not uh, contributing in the constitution of the orbit. I will change my pointer in the form of highlighter. So that you can see uh, this this one this B type in fracture of the magnetic arch over there. Henderson's classification, according to this classification, Henderson has divided the zygomatic maxillary complex fractures into uh, seven types. Again, the first type is the 
is the undisplaced fracture and the last seventh type is the comminuted or multiple fractures are maximally displaced fracture all other categories are in between the second type, isol uh, type uh, isolated zygomatic arch fracture then the third type is the zygomatic medullary complex fracture with frontal zygomatic suture and displaced as it is a tetrapod bone if frontal zygomatic suture is intact or not distracted then it is type 3 if there is also separation or distraction or displacement at frontal zygomatic suture uh, area also then it is is it is zygomatic medullary complex fracture with fz distracted or or frontal zygomatic suture displaced type 4 type 5 is uh, is pure blowout fractures blowout fractures are the fractures of the orbit Henderson has also included the orbital fractures into the zygomatic medullary complex fractures but uh, uh, many authors deal the orbital fractures separately as uh, blow out and blow in fractures if and pure and impure fractures pure fracture means the fracture of the wall of the orbit especially we uh, 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 we deal with the with the fractures of the orbital floor because the floor fractures are very common when there is there is damage or, or fracture of the zygomatic bone definitely there is also disruption of the of the floor of, uh, of orbit also because the zygomatic bone it also uh, it takes part in the constitution of the orbit pure fracture means the fracture of the wall of orbit like isolated uh, floor of orbit fracture a lateral uh, wall of orbit a roof of the orbit a medial wall of the orbit if only the wall of the orbit is fractured we will call it as pure fracture and if orbital rim, like infraorbital rim, like supraorbital rim, medial orbital rim, or supraorbital rim, if the orbital rim is also fractured, then we will call this fracture as impure fracture. And if the fracture is such that the wall of orbit has displaced outward from the orbital cavity, like most commonly when there is the fracture of the orbital floor, the bones of the orbit they come down towards the maxillary sinus from about uh, from the orbital area outward towards the maxillary sinus it's, uh, the, uh, uh, the bone this get displaced downward towards the maxillary sinus within the cavity of the maxillary sinus but the, the orbital floor it is coming out from towards the orbital cavity and uh, thus we will ca call it as blow out fracture Again, if the wall as well as the infraorbital rim both are fractured, then we will call these fracture as in, uh, blow out, impure blowout fracture. If only isolated orbital float fracture and outward displacement of the fracture towards the negative sinus, then we will call it as 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 a blow a pure blowout fracture. And mostly blowout fractures, these are uh, are of the orbital float fracture. And if if orbital roof is fractured. That is, that is the bone of the anterior cranial fossa or the roof of the orbit because the roof of the orbit it forms the, uh, and the anterior cranial fossa also. And if that, and that roof gets fractured, that comes mostly towards inside the orbital cable as pure, uh, blow in fracture. And then sixth type is the fractures of the orbital rim only. And the seventh type is the comminuted or multiple fractures. Coming towards the diagnosis, diagnosis is mainly based on the history of patient. In case of zygomatic medullary complex fractures, definitely there will be some underlying pathology like trauma, most commonly road traffic accidents, are due to interpersonal violences, are due to blast injuries, are due to gunshot injuries, are due to sports injuries, are due to industrial trauma, are due to fall extra. These are the common common etiological factors. For all type of fractures, almost, almost. That uh, that is whenever someone asks you about the etiology of any of the fracture, like dental velar fracture, or mandibular fractures, or maxillary fractures, or midfacial fractures, frontal bone fractures, or orbital fractures, or nasoethmoidal fractures, or zygomatic medullary complex fractures, you can bring all these uh, etiological factors uh, under uh, under the umbrella of the etiology of all the uh, maxillofacial fractures. Uh, because these uh, etiological factors are common to uh, all, all the factors and coming to uh, uh, for, for diagnosis purposes definitely the patient will has 
uh, any of these etiological factors and very common factor is the is the road traffic accident or interpersonal violences and uh, then we uh, after taking history of the patient we clinically evaluate the patient as far as the zygomatic or maxillary complex fractures are, are are concerned different clinical features with which the patient usually presents there is infobital ecchymosis this blackness blackening of the infobital infobital area or the lower eyelid there is ecchymosis and the, here in this in this upper left picture where i am moving the cursor highlighting this one uh, this is periorbital ecchymosis that is blackening all around the uh, around the orbit and usually the <clears throat> this type of of, of ecchymosis like are, are like in the second uh, picture that is upper upper right pic, uh, picture this type of ecchymosis commonly occurs in leaf foot 3 fractures are in 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 uh, in leaf foot 2 as well as leaf foot 3 fractures and may also occur in in zygomatic maxillary complex fractures but more commonly <clears throat> this ecchymosis in case of zygomatic maxillary complex fractures it it is more confined towards the lower eyelid region like here also in the in the first pic the the uh, the chymosis is more uh, in the lower eyelid and then subconjunctival hemorrhage this is also one of the important feature this redness in the eye why the blood in the in the in the conjunctiva it is red but in the in in the eyelid region it has become black as you know the oxygenated blood it is usually red and the the blood which which is devoid of the oxygen it it becomes relatively it, it, uh, the area then becomes bluish or blackish here in the in the subcutaneous area in the skin area in the lid area there's no oxygenation of blood after trauma because this blood has come out from the capillaries from the microvasculation after after trauma and due to which this this area has been become blackened because there's no oxygenation of the blood inside this area area but in case of subconjunctival hemorrhage as you know the conjunctiva it has it doesn't has its own oxygen uh, blood supply or oxygenation or perfusion it get perfused uh, uh, by oxygen from the atmosphere by the diffusion when the blood is over there in, within the uh, eye and in the subconjunctival area in the form of subconjunctival hemorrhage this blood get oxygen from the atmosphere and the blood uh, re uh, retains its oxygen oxygenation and due to which this this uh, 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 the color of the conjunctiva is red over there because this is oxygenated blood this is also important feature of of zygomatic maxillary complex fracture that is uh, ecchymosis then subconjunctival hemorrhage and coming in the towards this uh, uh, lower left picture there is flattening of the malar eminence what is what it means that when there is there is trauma to zygomatic bone it get displays the malar eminence malar eminence that is uh, that is the prominent aesthetic unit of face that is the zygomatic prominence zygomatic prominence i am also pointing on myself the zygomatic eminence this zygomatic eminence it is also called malar prominence malar prominence when there is trauma to the zygomatic bone the bone get depressed either inward or downward or posteriorly then this malar prominence it, it it is no more there this leads to flattening flattening of the and the term used is flattening of malar prominence this is also important feature of the zygomatic maxillary complex fractures then <clears throat> there is infobital nerve exiting from the infobital foramen and this infobital foramen is uh, is uh, in within the maxillary bone and it is exactly almost 1 cm below the medial aspect of the limbus the limbus means sclerocorneal junction sclerocorneal junction if you draw an imaginary line from here from innermost area of this black portion of the eye downward <coughs> coming down almost 1 cm uh, from from infobital margin there is infobital foramen from where infobital nerve and vessels exit after exiting uh, from here infobital nerve it gives <coughs> four branches one to let uh, alaph nose the other one lateral aspect of, uh, of upper lip then <coughs> sorry <coughs> 
then uh, to the skin uh, skin at, uh, of the cheek area over the malar prominence then the skin of the lower eyelid these four areas when there is damage or compression on the on the infraorbital nerve then the paresthesia anesthesia or uh, neurosensory deficit in this area will also occur and if there is damage to zygomatic facial or zygomatic temporal nerves then the area supplied by these nerves will be numb or there will be paresthesia or anesthesia in these regions and when the patient presents to you that there could be due to trauma there could be laceration and usually when the patient is referred to you the patient comes with initial management and there could be sutured laceration or there could be encrusted blood in that area also or <clears throat> when you clinically palpate there could be step deformity or definitely the patient may also feel pain, pain in that area and when you will palpate that there could be tenderness in that area or step deformity in our crepitus could also be there <clears throat> like here also suture laceration and due to trauma there could be swelling also and if there is swelling in the upper eyelid region <clears throat> usually this here the supratarsal fold it there is no obliteration of that that is the area is swollen there is no supratarsal fold no uh, more over, over there and if the zygomatic bone it 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 get displaced downward one more thing which you have to understand is laterally there is frontozygomatic suture and below this frontozygomatic suture almost 0.5 to 1 cm below there is a tubercle called vitnal's tubercle and this vitnal's tubercle it gives it gives attachment to suspensory ligament of lockwood this suspensory ligament of lockwood all around below the globe below the eye globe it gives suspension or gives support to the eye globe eye ball once the zygomatic bone get fractured from above this vitnal tubercle especially at frontozygomatic suture and if there is gross downward displacement of the zygomatic whole complex then <clears throat> this this bone from from this frontozygomatic suture it will come down and along with this bone the vitnal tubercle it will also come down as a suspensory ligament of lockwood it is attached to the vitnal tubercle this ligament will also come down so consequent to this the spur to the eye globe it will get it will be no more, uh, 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 no more there once that spur to the globe is not there definitely the eye globe will also follow that and will come down once the eye globe will come down <clears throat> definitely there will be change in the position of the both eye on the traumatized side as well as on the normal side the normal sided globe will be in its normal position but the, uh, the the traumatized side the eye globe will come down this coming down of the globe is labeled as hypoglobus once the globe is downward position definitely the visual axis of both eye will change once the visual axis of both eye will change this will lead to diplopia this is also one of the important feature of the zygomatic mixi complex fractures and then once the uh, the zygomatic maxillary complex comes downward the globe also follows that the upper lid will also follow that like here the upper lid when comes downward this is called ptosis or hooding of eye and this traumatic ptosis it is pseudotosis it is pseudotosis not true ptosis true ptosis is true ptosis is due to due to damage to the uh, oculomotor nerve which supplies to the levator palpebral superioris muscle if there is if there is if if there is there is damage to the to the now and the cause is neurological then then we will call it as true ptosis true ptosis but in, if it is uh, the cause is trauma then we will label it as pseudo ptosis and once the 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 eyelid comes downward there will be loss of the supratarsal fold and and if if the uh, the zygomatic mixi complex comes down the overall volume of the orbit will increase once the volume of orbit will increase the eye eye globe either it will come downward or it may also go inward especially if there is associated orbital floor fracture 
and especially if the orbital floor is fractured from its first